Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good afternoon, Ira Epstein of Blinder & Associates with your financial market update for this Tuesday, the 5th of September, 2017. So what would you call the highlights of the day? I think they're pretty easy. North Korea, Congress returns back to Washington, D.C., European Central Bank meeting taking place on Thursday, I think you'd agree with all that, and of course, the big Hurricane Irma that is right around the corner. Not Harvey, Irma. If you're not hearing about it, better pay attention. Could hit Southern Florida uh, this weekend. It's already a Category 5. Now, I'm not saying that wrong. Right now, it is the fifth strongest measured hurricane ever in the Atlantic. Could get stronger. What if it hits? All right, let's take a look at the dial. We have a market that is on the verge of trying to correct. Now, we're in the month of September. September is notorious for being a weak month. If you go back 100 years and you start looking at September, it's probably the most popular month for breaks. I read an article this morning, it was on CNBC, that if you invested $100 September 1st, got out September 30th, and you did it for 50 years, that same $100. At the end of it, you're behind. <laughs> wow, they didn't say that about other months. I found that just fascinating. Having, in the past, been a partner in a stock firm, I know the September-October breaks that people talk about. Now, I hope you also realize that at the same time, you know what the strongest quarter of the year is? fourth quarter for stock prices. So is this break going to set something up for us and how deep does it go? Or is it the start of a top, a long way to top? Well, I'll let you all figure that out. I'll give you my ideas as we go along. I don't think you can get away from the point that right now we're getting a market that's sort of oscillating. The last rally high here, right here, was uh, on a weekly chart, 22,037. The previous high was right here, 2246. So we've got a market that's got some top action developing. We haven't taken out any serious lows just yet. But when we go to an area chart on a daily basis of just closes, suddenly you're seeing the weakness. You saw that weakness developing back here, and I know I pointed that out to you. Then we had what we call an upthrust through last week, and I decided to continue with the Dow at least for today to give you what has happened since then. So I'm bringing you up to date. So there is weakness that is set in. You see it on the chart right here. And the big question is, if we look at the lows of Friday at 21,966 and today's highs at 21,948, well, I haven't heard any technician mention it. I'll give you a little secret. There's a gap in the chart right here. Markets often fill gaps. So it's something that you keep in the back of your mind. As the market's got a pattern here on the swing line, we have a lower low and a higher high. There is no trend. In order to have a trend, you either have lower highs, lower lows for a downtrend, higher lows, higher highs for an uptrend, and no trend has in some order a higher high and a lower low. Got it? Not a trend. The market had been fighting at the 18-day average of closes. It sliced under it today. Okay, now we have to see, does it have legs to it? Is it going to be able to get through this low, or is it going to get a bounce here and come back to that 18-day average to fight a battle? What else do we see? We see a market that's got these black bands called Bollinger Bands, and it's sort of stuck in between them right now, not getting much follow-through on the upside or the downside out of them. Okay, that's good to know. We know we have a weak September, and we know the bias of the market is down because it's under the 18-day average of closes, and guess what else? 
momentum turn down today. As you can see, that red line is underneath the blue. So we have momentum down, bias down. If the market continues lower, it might make a run to the lower Bollinger Band. When we go to the S&P 500 index, this is actually a stronger chart. Now let's go back to this chart. Did we hit the upper Bollinger Band? We didn't. We missed it by 28 points. You didn't hit it and then you fell back. When we come to this chart, you got right up on Friday to that upper Bollinger Band and bang, you fall right back to the 18-day average where it did find support. That number is 24.49. The low today was 24.45 and a half. There is no trend here as well. You have the lower and low and the higher high, and momentum is overbought and trying to turn down. Oh, excuse me. When I come to the next chart, the NASDAQ, what do we have? Let's take a look. We have a lower low and a higher high. And like the S&P, this chart also got up to its upper Bollinger Band, which is a sign of strength. Falling back would not be surprised if it hits the 18-day average on its journey to figure out what to do next. It's overbought, trying to get momentum to turn down. And the strongest of the charts suddenly got a very bad signal. What do I mean? This is the Russell 2000. I had been telling you for a long time it was the prettiest of the charts. It had the higher lows, higher highs over the 18-day average. Thought it might make its way to the upper Bollinger Band. Ran into its resistance right there. This is uh, the action that you can see, and it starts slipping back. But there is a problem here. If this chart is correct, you have a market that comes down, goes up, you had an outside day up, and you take out that low. If that's correct, uh, Odds are the market goes to the closest of the moving averages underneath it. Now, this all happened pretty close to the 100-day average, but underneath it. So if it corrects further, I could pinpoint the way that I teach charting, and it doesn't mean I'm right, that the 18-day average at 1381.50 could be a target number for that market. In the VIX, the game came down. Broke pretty hard from 14.34 to 10.02 and now rallied back up today to a high of 14.06 and then fell back under the 18-day average of closes. So the momentum is still down. The pattern is a higher high here and a lower low here. You are not trending. You are in oversold territory. And notice you had an embedded reading. Both numbers were, let's count them, how many days I believe under 20. There. The next day under 20, the next day. There's your three days through Friday, and you lose it today. So unless it's going to gain it back immediately, the odds favor this market can make another run, maybe to the upper Bollinger Band if the stock market decides to break. Where you've had buying come in with all this tension, I guess that's the right word to call it all, is in the bonds, and of course this represents in one manner uh, interest rates, and it, it's a basket, an e EDF of them, and it went right back to the upper Bollinger Band and ran out of momentum, literally right against it. The pattern is one of a lower low and a higher high in an overbought market. Don't know what to do there. T-bonds, the market had on Friday an outside day down. Do you see that? And all of a sudden today it takes that high out. So that outside day's void, the market's over the upper Bollinger Band, you know my thoughts, it only spends 5% of the time over it, but the market is saying that it's got strength right here, and why not? There's so much to be fearful of at this point in time. Ten-year notes, the same pattern. You had an outside day down on Friday. As soon as you took that high out, you just caught the shorts at that point. You are overbought in an uptrend over the upper Bollinger Band and the dollar index. Dollar index is interesting. Let's take today's action off the chart. You have a pattern here of lower highs, lower and lows, bearish. Market rallies up here on Monday and pulls back. What do we have? We have lower highs, but not lower lows. You're not in a downtrend. You have flat momentum. You're trying to build that downtrend, or are you in it? You're in it because of the hierarchy, the lower highs there and lower and low. What I don't like on the chart is this. You suddenly have a higher and low need to take that out. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here's the hierarchy. 
lower highs, lower lows. This high on this day was 93.30 and a half, and this high was 93.37. So you got the lower highs, you already got the lower and low, stalls out, comes back up. Do you disagree you now have higher lows and lower highs? That always puts me uneasy. I'm not saying that the means anything, I'm saying puts me uneasy. Momentum trying to turn down. So let's assume the market breaks. The last break low was 05. You're going to get support wherever that Bollinger Band is tonight, probably around the 92.03, 02 level is where it'll come in. In the SEP Euro currency, you have the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Bullish. The bias is up because you're over the 18-day average. Momentum is flat. Your dilemma on this currency is what do you do about Thursday's European Central Bank announcement and Mr. Draghi's press conference? always difficult. The Aussie dollar, the Royal Bank of Australia today, they're not changing their monetary policy. They're having good business. China's doing very well, thank you. They're able to ship their materials. Higher lows, higher highs. You're in an uptrend running the upper Bollinger Band, but you are overbought. Japanese yen, you know what they did here repatriation of money. Everybody's scared with North Korea. And when they get scared, what happens is people repatriate. So now the Japanese money goes back home, makes the yen a bit stronger. You got higher high, lower and low, caught between the upper and lower Bollinger Band. Momentum is up, as is the bias of the market. There is not a trend as I see it. In the crude oil today, you close 48.66. The one thing that I think we said that might make a lot of sense from last week, they threw the kitchen sink to the downside on crude oil because the refineries during Harvey were not buying it. The refineries were shut. You don't have that many more refineries, folks. What you got, you got in the United States. I don't recall the last time a refinery's been built. Ethanol plants, yes, not refineries. And that's all that they could do. So as soon as the refineries get turned back on, guess what they need to make them run? Oil. It's come up. Now the danger for you is there's 40 cargoes of oil on its way from Europe and Asia. They've been booked and they're on the seas. They're going to come in, so regardless of what you hear, there's more crude about to hit our shores. And product. Generally, Asia sends us reformulated. I believe the European cargoes are going to be the crude and they'll, they'll hit the eastern shore. Now, they might get delayed if this Hurricane Irma is something really crazy and it depends on the path that it travels. So you got so much to take into account, but the market ended its decline. I don't think it's in an uptrend. It has a lower and low and a higher high. It has upside bias because it's over the 18-day average and momentum's pointing up. Gasoline, well, the correction has begun. We've got the Labor Day holiday behind us. We had a squeeze play in gasoline because of Hurricane Harvey. Now the market's already off that high of 178 and a fraction by nine cents. And I can't say there's more to come, but it would not be a surprise. The market has in terms of momentum here, if we count the days over 80 on the stochastic one, then yesterday, but not the day before. You're just in an overbought condition. You could embed. I don't know that you are at this point. And you fell back to support in the nat gas from the upper Bollinger Band. What's the thing that I teach you here? When you hit these upper bands, be careful. That's where the pros normally are trying to take money off the table. You certainly got up through it on Friday, tried to make a run for the 100-day average up there, missed and came right back to the 18-day average. The trend is up. The momentum is pointing down, and the market closed under the 18-day average. It's a mess, the charts. So don't know what else to tell you on that. I want to remind you about seasonals. The October seasonals, I just checked with the more research, came out. They must have come out over the weekend or today. So I've already got my Septembers in hand, and I look to see what they are. Then I'm looking for the Octobers. Now, the seasonals cover the whole commodity complex. And what their database does is it looks in a certain way to say, if the market was bought on this day or sold on this day, and you got out on this day, the trade either made profit or loss X period of time. It does it a very uh, succinct way. You'd want to go to their website to get a feel for it. It is not meant to be used as a tool by itself. They tell you that. I tell you that. Anyone that understands seasonals do. But it's a tool. And as a tool, I'm looking, example, in grains. When's the harvest pressure come in? 
I'm looking in energies. What happens as we get ready for colder weather in the winter? I'm looking in stock indices. You know, September's often a weak month. Is there any seasonal there I should be paying attention to? Maybe there's a seasonal for October that takes advantage of the September if you get that weakness. So there's a whole what if. And what they do is they make two weeks available. All you need to do is give us a phone call. You can go to our website. You'll see a carousel of free offers. They're on it. You can click up here at any time. If you're watching me on YouTube, it'll take you to our forms. You'll see the free offer there. And underneath us on many websites says, click here for Iris free offers. Why not add this tool to your arsenal and see if it does you any good? It's that simple. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow.